Good morning. morning. Welcome to Fishkill United Methodist Church. We are happy to see you all. If you're a visitor, thank you for joining us this morning. We're glad that you are here. Please sign our guest book in the rear of the church in the narthex. Our ushers will help you if you have any questions. My name is Tom Drew, and I will be leading us through the first part of the service this morning. The flowers on the altar this morning are given to the glory of God and in memory of all of our loved ones. We'll be using the Red United Methodist Hymnal today, or you can follow along with the presentation on the TV screen to my right. Prayers, scripture readings, and the hymns are also projected on the wall to my right. Although announcements will be highlighted later in the service, please, please remember to look at the colored insert in the bulletin for the latest information on the ministries and events of the church. If you have a prayer request that you would like lifted during prayers of the people, you can fill out the yellow slip in the aisle and the ushers will come around and, and, and bring them up to the pastor. Now let us begin our worship. If you're able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. We have an introit this morning. I believe it's the introit. Uya i mose tinama temwari. Uya i mose Uya i mose tinama temwari. Uya i mose svino. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Now, if you're able, remain standing for the call to worship. We are people of God created to love. We will love the land of our God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are people of God determined to love. We will love our neighbors and treat them as we would be treated. We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity or favor. We choose to love. Our hymn is number 709 in the red hymnal, Come, Let Us Join Our Friends Above.
Please be seated. Let us join our voices together in a prayer of confession. Good and great God, we come to you through Jesus Christ who intercedes on our behalf. We confess our sins, seeking forgiveness, not only that we may be but also that we may pray for others. We are ashamed that our prayers are often as self-centered as our lives. Excuse our disordered priorities as we seek to change and reorder our lives according to the teaching and spirit of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Now let us take a silent moment for con personal confession. Friends, hear the good news. God has chosen you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit. We are saved by the Spirit through belief in the truth in Christ. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. At this time, I invite our children to come forward. Good morning. Ooh. Got a little reverb. I'm going to shift this way a little bit. How are you two this morning? Good. Yeah. five? Yeah. It's good to see you again. It's been a couple of weeks, huh? So, I want to ask you a question. Do you know what a saint is? Yeah. Okay, I didn't expect you would. So a saint, in what we're going to be talking about today, is someone who has come before us and who has helped to mold and shape us and who is no longer with us. Do you know any people who mold and shape you now? You know, what that means is someone who helps you learn on how to be a, hum a good human being. Are there people who help you do that? I see you looking. You want to say it out loud? No. So our parents, our grandparents, uh, we've got friends and aunts and uncles, right? Do they teach you how to be a good person? Yeah. So in a little bit today, we're going to talk about the people who have come before and helped us to know how to be a good person. And we're going to give thanks for them. Isn't that a good thing to do? Yeah. To be grateful for that. Will you pray with me today? Yeah. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for those who come before to teach us how to live and how to love you and one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job, guys. <laughs> awesome. At this time, I invite our ushers to collect the yellow slips for our prayers this morning. Let us turn our hearts and our minds to our Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving, and merciful God, we give you thanks for this day, the opportunity to gather together, to share. For those who 
who have come before us, who light the way, who guide us and shape us. We give you thanks that we can gather in this space. We give you thanks for your presence in and among us. And most of all, O oh Lord, we give you thanks for the ability to come before you, to come and lay at your feet those concerns of our hearts. In this moment, we lift up Suzanne, who is in need of healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Felix, the Coburn's grandson, who is hospitalized with an eye infection as we pray for continued healing, we give you thanks for healing that has already begun. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up a friend who is in grave condition at Vassar. We ask this, O oh Lord, in your mercy. And as our nation turns to the polls once again this week, we ask for you to be present in the hearts of all people, that we may have a fair and safe election for all, and that the results, whatever they may be, seek to unite your people and not divide. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Debbie, a friend of Jane, who is having terrible back pain. We pray for the specialist she will be seeing and pray for healing and resolution to her problems. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up our nation as a whole. Guide your people to do what is right and good for one another to love one another. We lift up this world. We lift up all the people in it, that they might feel your presence, your peace, your love, and your hope. That in all things, in all things, we may be looking for you. And Lord, in this day, we lift up your church, Christ's body here on earth, that we might be at work here in this world, your hands, your feet, your heart and loving care, the word that somebody needs. And we give you thanks for the safe jurisdictional conference that just ended this week. We give you praise for a newly elected bishop, and we pray for the next two years as we continue with our bishop, Tom Bickerton. We ask all these things in your name, O Lord. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 20, verses 27 through 38. Rise as you're able for the reading of the Gospel, please. The question about the resurrection. Some, tad, some Sadducees, Sadduce, Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his own. Now there were seven brothers, the first married and died childless. Then the second, then the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. 
But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are they given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die any more because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. Our hymn is number 577 in the red hymnal, God of grace and God of glory. Our second reading from the Old Testament today comes from the prophet Haggai. Hear now these words. In the second year of King Darius, in the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you, do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, 
Once again, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations, so that the treasure of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you once again. We give you thanks for this day and the opportunity to share with you in this space. I ask a personal prayer, O Lord, that either through me or in spite of me, your people hear your voice and your message alone. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. On Friday, May 19th, 2017, my whole family's lives changed. I was living with my mother at the time in the house that I grew up in. I had dropped off my mother at a mechanic to pick up a vehicle that had gone through some routine maintenance and then she was going to drive about 45 minutes to pick up my niece and nephew who were going to spend the weekend with us. As I returned to the house, there was a UPS truck parked in the front of the house. I didn't really think anything of it until I noticed the driver was not in the truck, nor was he delivering a package. He had gotten out of the truck and he was on his phone in the front yard and he seemed frantic. As I pulled in, he came running toward me while on his phone, yelling something that I couldn't hear until I got out. There's smoke. The house was on fire. He assured me that he had already called 911, and at that point I called the rest of my family. I called my mother and told her she needed to turn around and come back to the house. It was on fire. I called my siblings and told them what was going on, and note that I'm the youngest of five. On that day, our family came together to support one another and share in our grief. Even my sister, who lives an hour away from everybody else, was there. The firefighters were able to get our cats out of the house safely. No one was hurt, pets included. And afterward, the inside of the home was a total loss. The split-level house I grew up in had to be fully gutted down to the studs. From the outside, other than some soot from the smoke and the uninhabitable sign that the fire department put up, the house looked like any other home in the neighborhood and it took my mother almost a full year to get back into the house. When it was completed, it looked nothing like its former self inside, but on the outside, it was the same as it had always been. In our reading from Haggai today, the prophet is talking to a people who have returned to Jerusalem after being exiled for 70 years, and the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed by those who occupied the city. Leading up to the reading today, in the middle of the first chapter, Haggai had charged the Israelite people to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Our reading today comes about a month after that chapter. The project to rebuild the temple had begun. There were people who remembered the first temple. The book of Ezra tells us that those who could remember the first temple wept and were sorrowful at the sight of the foundation that was built for the new temple. And at the same time, there were those who were too young to remember the temple in its former glory. They cheered and they praised for the work that they had accomplished in laying a new foundation. With that in mind, Haggai asks the people three questions that challenged them to examine their state of mind. Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? 
Often, and in modern times, we tend to do this too. We have a tendency to remember something we love dearly in very grand ways. We tend to remember the things with such a nostalgia that it holds a sacredness in and of itself for us that we try so hard to hold on to, even if there is no possible way to return to that former state of glory. We often refer to these recollections as remembering the glory days. Haggai is telling the Israelites that there may have been glory days in the past, but that does not mean that there cannot, nor does it mean that there will not be glory days in the future. While many of the Israelites do not have a memory of the temple before its destruction, those who do are grieving for what they lost. Even though they have fond memories and recollections of what the temple was. This is the only the beginning of the rebuild. It would not be completed for at least another four years after laying the foundation. Haggai encourages the people to persevere, that God was with them during that exile, and God would continue to be with them through that rebuild. If the Israelites keep the faith and do the work to rebuild the temple, not only would the temple be restored, it will once again be a thing of great glory and splendor. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again, in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity. Knowing that God is always faithful to provide, Haggai reminds the Israelites then and us today that everything they have and everything we have and everything they are and everything we are is because of the promises fulfilled by God. If the Israelites faithfully put in the work, the second temple's splendor and glory will be greater than that of the first. And today, if we put in the work, then this post-pandemic church will be a thing of great glory and splendor that has not been before the pandemic. By putting in the work, God will be faithful in providing the resources and connections necessary to rebuild, both within the community and beyond, not only to a point of survival, but to a point where we thrive. All things belong to God, the resources throughout the earth financially, and the gifts and talents that people have to complete the tasks for building the temple. All these things are for God's people to thrive and be the community and to be in community with God and one another. Today begins our pledge drive, our stewardship campaign. And this is what stewardship is all about. When we are faithful with our resources, God is faithful to provide all our needs. And while financial giving is important for the church to function, it is not only our financial gifts that God requires of us. We have each been granted spiritual gifts and talents. And the membership vows for the United Methodist Church. We pledge to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. When we faithfully live into that pledge, our lives become transformed. We become new in our spiritual disciplines. We draw closer to God and our hearts are transformed through our experience. Discipleship is a journey. Each of us are in different places in our own journeys, yet for this time, we share the path. 
We are travelers together on this spiritual journey. As we go forth into this season and consider what we might be able to give of ourselves, both financially and with our talents and time, we have an opportunity right now to enter into a new discernment process. What are the gifts that we have that could be used to further the mission of the church and the ministry here in this community? How has God been pulling at our hearts over the past year? And how can we live into who God has called us to be individually and as a community here and now? This church has a long and celebrated history. There is certainly a former glory that built the foundations of this church community that we worship and share today. Coming out of the limitations that the pandemic has put on the church's ministry, we enter into a new era and create, have the opportunity to create a new and future glory. As we look back, and in a moment we will remember those who have come before us, in a moment we will have the opportunity to lift up names of those who we care about, who have formed us and helped to shape us. Let us remember the foundation of those who built this church those who nourished us, both this local church and those around us, who laid the foundation, who built it up so that we can be here today, who built our faith, nourished us, so that we might continue faithfully on our journey and lay the foundation for the generations to come. This is stewardship. Because the most important thing for us to remember is that when we talk about former and future glory, it is all for God's glory, not our own. Amen. And now in this moment, we turn our hearts and our minds to those who have come before us. My mind just went blank. Does someone from the worship committee remember how we planned to light the tea lights? I'll we'll invite our liturgist to do so as we read the names. Our lector to, if you would light. As I read a name, we will light a tea light. For many of our, the people that we have listed in your bulletin, we have images on our slides that you may view. Lord God, we come before you as a community to remember the saints that have come before us, those who have laid a foundation for who we are as your people. We remember friends, we remember family, we remember neighbors, cousins, those who, know, who we know dearly, and those who we are just, we were just getting to know. We lift up Ruth Abernathy. James Alm. Ruben Arroyo. Brian Beggert. Marianne Bob. Trudy Carlisle, 
Wayne Ennist. Brenda Leonelli. Francis Lowhead. Larry Meisner. William Niles. Dorothy Odell. Jean Shiavi. Dan Sucker. James Tompkins. We lift up those now, as you wish, where you are. You can lift up a name aloud that those who have gone before us and have gone on to glory in this past year. Reverend James Midgley. In this moment, we lift up all those who have gone before in the years before this last year, who we remember in our hearts and every day. You may say the names aloud in this time. Bruce Levine. Let us pray. Today, O oh Lord, we lift up the saints. We lift up especially those who have passed in the last year and those who, whether we said them aloud or we held them in our hearts, we lift it up to you today. Those who have gone before us in years past, we ask that you help us remember the lessons that we learned from them. That you help us remember them and the love that brought us so much closer to knowing who you are. Help us to remember your people, to remember those who have laid a foundation for us that we might be the foundation for the next generation. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Played a party last night for some old folks. They were dancing and smiling at me. Except this old man alone at a table. 
as if to some place that he'd rather be. So I said, sir, can I play something for you? Something special that you'd like to hear. When he looked up at me, he was smiling, but his eyes couldn't hide the tears. He said, play me the waltz of the angels and I'll close my eyes and pretend. Play me the waltz of the angels so I can dance with my angel again. He said, yes, that's the song I remember. That's the one that she loved the best. It was playing on the night that I met her. And it was playing when we laid her to rest. Play me the waltz of the angels And I'll close my eyes and pretend Play me the waltz of the angels So I can dance with my angel again Play me the waltz of the angels and I'll close my eyes and pretend. Play me the waltz of the angels so I can dance with my angel again. Let me dance with my angel again. Amen. Let us now turn our hearts to the sacrament as we join in communion with the saints. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful always and everywhere to give thanks to you Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children and to all generations, and so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, 
You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water. And this on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Since we are surrounded by so great a witness, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And as children of God, we are so bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one loaf. The breaking of the bread is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Today, because we are entering the now the cold and flu season, for the next few months we are going to return to using little cups, but not prepackaged unless you so desire. What we will do this month is uh, Marilyn is going to hold the tray that has the little cups. After you receive the bread from me, you will take the cup. You can choose to eat them one at a time or, or take them separately. When you have finished with the juice in the cup, there are holes along the altar rail. We ask that you put the cup in those holes as you return back to your seat. Come now, share in this sacrament. Come at the direction of the ushers.
this month I wanted to introduce something new for us. As a community, we send people out to extend this table to those who couldn't be with us. So as a community, let us now offer a prayer for our lay communion distributors. You'll see it on the screen. Gracious God, we remember the apostolic church which sent representatives from the Lord's table to those unable to be present. Bless and assist these lay visitors who continue this ministry, nourish and strengthen those to whom this sacrament is brought, that they may know the comfort of your presence and the love of this community of faith. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now, once again, let us also join our voices together as we pray, eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. You have knit together your people in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow the holy saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those Sincerely love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time we join together as we look at the ministries of this church the announcements that we share with one another. We have the orange insert this week with the things that are going on. I invite us all to uh, remember that this Tuesday, our election day is uh, the election day luncheon. There will be set up tomorrow for that. After worship today, we also have tables set up in the fellowship hall for the luncheon. Um, there will also be a new member class in room 24, which is right across from the sanctuary over here. Uh, if you are interested in joining the church, please come and join us. Um, are there any other announcements? Lovely Montauk daisies are provided by Marissa Irish, and she invites anyone whose loved one was um, uh, lifted up today uh, to take a daisy home. An update on the crop walk. I don't know if you can hear me. We thought we'd raise maybe $700. Well, as of today, and you can still donate, it's $1,755 that we raised. So, good clap. I, I still have stickers. And uh, Pastor Dan already mentioned the Election Day luncheon, which is Tuesday, and help is still needed wherever you can help today and tomorrow. Thank you. We're having a work day on Saturday, and we're going to meet out in the front of the sanctuary or, or on the front porch. We're going to work outdoors if the weather's good, and indoors if it's really bad, or some of both. Hope you can come and help. Thank you. Um, also, to we continue our um, regularly scheduled meeting programming, uh, other than on Tuesday, um, with our, our nominations committee, we'll meet tomorrow evening via Zoom. And church council meets Wednesday, also via Zoom. Uh, are there any other announcements today? Yes, Art. Could you announce uh, the uh, Christmas concert is planned to December 10th, and um, people can start thinking about what they might want to do. And then if uh, want to do anything musically, please approach me. And as all these notes go, they'll require your participation. So please contact me. 
If you could not hear that, that was uh, the Christmas concert on December 10th, it's a Saturday, and um, all levels of talent are invited to participate. Lynette. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Bill. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. With no other announcements today, let us um, respond um, with our stewardship spotlight. <laughs> okay, I hope you can hear me. I am Beth Mastransky. I'm part of the finance committee in the church. Today we start our 2023 pledge campaign, um, and we've been handing out the envelopes, those that are present. We will be mailing some. Uh, we're going to present some slides on the next three Sundays that show the past, now, and, okay, and future of our beloved church. We will focus on not just the financial needs, commitments of our church, but also the areas of interest members may have within our church. The first slide, whoop, too fast, okay is 42 Broad Street. Well, it was sold last year. This shows the building that was there, and I thank Carrie for giving it to me. The next two show the demolition by the new owner, Anthony Segretti, that took place, and we think it happened in February. Next. In June, we had to say goodbye to Pastor Micah and Kieran. There was supposed to be another slide after this with both of them. The church held, hosted an amazing picnic with good food and fun games. I'm sure you can find yourself in all those, in that crowd. There were a lot of us there. Third slide. The trustee, oh well, anyway, the, there were slides for this, for this that I'm going to talk about. The trustees and other church members worked on 40 Broad Street so it could be rented again. And this slide, we were able to use the money from the sale of 42 Broad Street to have our lovely church painted professionally. Along with that, the memorial committee erected a new church sign. We hope you will be a part of our worship to God with your giving. Come back next Sunday for our NOW presentation. Thank you. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward as we respond to God's call for us with our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the gifts you have given us as we turn them over to your purpose. May these expressions of our faith and trust in you be used to spread your care for humanity throughout this community and beyond, that through our faithfulness, the world may come to know you more. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to remain standing for our closing hymn, number 711, For All the Saints. O blessed communion, fellowship divine. We shared this sacramental meal with all who have gone before. Truly a communion of the saints. Go into the world knowing that you are beloved, that you have been raised and formed on a foundation, 
and that there are those looking to you as they work on their foundation. Go into the world with the love of Jesus Christ, that the world may know who God is through your love and care. Amen.